Thomson Reuters Foundation. Who are we? We're essentially the corporate uh, philanthropic arm of Thomson Reuters Corporation. Thomson Reuters itself is a, a combination of Thomson Financial and a Canadian financial company, which bought Reuters a few years ago, Reuters News that we all know and, and love. The foundation is a separate legal entity. We have our own board, our own CEO, and we do our own work. But essentially, this slide talks a little bit about what we do. But what's really important to note is that um, we use the skills, values, and expertise of Thomson Reuters to influence the public in a positive way. So we're not a grant-giving organization. We use all our own resources for our own programs. And those programs uh, come from the actual work that Thomson Reuters Corporation is involved in. And I'll talk a little bit about those different programs. Everything we do can be summarized in these three words, inform, connect, empower. How do we do this? Starting from the top left, we use the Reuters expertise to cover the world's underreported stories, whether they are around corruption, humanitarian issues, women's empowerment, and so on. We cover the stories that other people don't because we know that they're important, even though they may not be uh, financially revenue generating necessarily. Moving down, we have the Trust Women Conference, which we launched three years ago, which puts the rule of law behind women's rights. Um, the conference is about action, and at the end of every conference, everybody signs up to uh, certain actions that we in the foundation help them deliver on. We have Trust Law, which is the program I work on specifically, which provides free legal assistance to charities, NGOs, and social enterprises around the world. And we have seen journalists from around the world using the Reuters expertise. So going a little bit in depth now, covering the world's underreported stories, we have 27 of our own journalists reporting on behalf of the foundation. They tend to be Reuters journalists that have sort of jumped ship and have joined the foundation instead, and they cover those issues from around the world. Um, in addition to those 27 journalists, we have about 100 contributors. These are freelance journalists who we pay on a story per story basis to cover these humanitarian issues from around the world. And by the way, all of this uh, is available on our website for free. All of the news that we provide is entirely free of charge. But covering the stories in an editorial way is, uh, we do that in more, more than just writing articles and, and doing um, uh, small documentaries. We also use uh, data journalism to put together polls. This is a poll that we did last year, uh, which was extremely successful and caused quite a bit of controversy. Essentially, we looked at the best and worst places to be a woman in the Arab world. And at the top of the list, meaning the worst place, surprisingly, Egypt came out at the top, uh, which created quite a bit of controversy. And these polls have a fantastic reach and a fantastic impact. You can see here a little bit about the result where um, today I, I speak to people every day about Thomson Reuters Foundation. Most of them have never heard about us, but they have heard about some of our polls, so they have fantastic reach. Our CEO is regularly on CNN and Al Jazeera talking about the results of these polls. We do support independent journalism. We train journalists from developing countries. This what the foundation was originally uh, founded on when, when it was launched 30 years ago. So to date, we have ch trained over 12,000 journalists from developing countries, and 170 countries. And we've also helped set up independent news agencies in Iraq, Egypt, and Zimbabwe. The conference I was talking about earlier, we're in our third year now. And again, it's all about putting action behind words. So the last thing we wanted to do was create yet another conference where people come together and have fantastic discussion, but where maybe action isn't the focus. So we at the Thomson Reuters Foundation will help push forward the agendas and the actions that come out of the Trust Women Conference. And throughout the following 12 months, we help the different stakeholders uh, move forward on those actions and deliver. But trust law is really um, the program I know the most about. Um, I was hired five years ago to help design and launch this program. 
And essentially, trust law program is about taking the best law firms in the world, miraculously convincing them to work for free for our clients who are NGOs and social enterprises from 150 different countries. And this is where perhaps we can do some work together. Um, we work with these organizations from practically every corner of the world. They can focus on any social, health, or even environmental issue. And we will essentially um, connect them with a lawyer to take care of their legal issues. We have 400 of the world's top law firms on board in 150 countries. We facilitated over 1,000 requests for free legal assistance, and that is at an estimated value of $35 million, which is not bad when you consider our entire foundation's budget is usually around 6 million pounds. The, the blue dots on this slide is where we have a physical presence. About half of our staff are here in London. The other staff are around the world. Um, and we're able to essentially get the local law firms in 150 countries to do free work for our clients entirely free of charge. This makes us the biggest provider of free legal services in the world. Some of our members, they're basically all the top law firms, which you would expect with working with 400 law firms. Um, but we also work with the corporate legal in-house counsel. So every corporation has a bunch of lawyers. Corporations like GE, uh, HP, they often have hundreds of lawyers. So we engage those lawyers as well to do free work through us. We work with hundreds of NGOs, social enterprises, both for-profit and non-profit. And we have uh, a number of fantastic referral partners like Ashoka, Hewlett Foundation, who will refer their grantees to us in order for them to get free legal assistance. How does it work? Well, it's remarkably simple. The first step is you become a member. We have a vetting criteria and a process to make sure that only the best NGOs, social enterprises, and law firms are the ones we work with. Then once you're a member, you log into the system, submit your legal request. We have a lawyer in our team who will always give you a call. We'll make sure you understand what the next steps are, and then we'll connect you to a lawyer in our network. What types of legal support can NGOs and social enterprises get through our program? Well, it's essentially any legal issue that's affecting the organization. We don't get involved in litigation or contentious matters, but things like um, contracts, drafting them, looking at them, making sure that they're, that they're up to scratch, um, expanding operations to a new country, uh, deciding what the best legal structure is, board, governance issues, these types of things are, are very much the kind of work that we do. We also put together guides for the social sector. So in, in the field of social entrepreneurship, um, the biggest question we come across is what's the right legal structure for me? Should I be a nonprofit, for profit, etc.? So we put together a guide that explains this to social entrepreneurs. But for those of you uh, involved in policy or advocacy work, we can help do all of the legal all of the legal research that is underpinning your advocacy work that you can then use in your advocacy work and your policy work to change policies for the better. For example, we work with the M Health Alliance uh, to look at privacy concerns and how it relates to mobile health technology. We've also worked with the Southern African AIDS Trust in their um, AIDS HIV self-testing kits that they're going to be expanding throughout Southern Africa. Uh, and looking at the legal issues there. These types of legal issues are entirely what's within the scope of, of trust law. So I know we're running short of time. I'm going to stop there and uh, invite you to please get in touch either now or later. And I'm sure we can do some work together. Thank you very much.